Hey guys, and welcome to Hata Gastro. In today's presentation, we will be covering the esophageal spasms. And this will be the final presentation on all the esophageal pathologies, so let's get started. The classification of esophageal spasms. The esophageal spasms can essentially be classified into two major pathologies that are distinct categories. The first category is the diffuse esophageal spasms, and the second category is the hypertensive peristalsis, which is also called the nutcracker esophagus. So today we're essentially talking about the spasms that occur in this hollow muscular tube, which is the esophagus. And normally the esophagus is responsible to carry the swallowed food down into the stomach so that it could be digested. And usually this is done during a process of peristalsis in the esophagus, which is small little contractions that push the food along. And this is a normal process. But today we're going to be talking about what happens if that peristalsis is not that normal anymore. The diffuse esophageal spasms. The diffuse esophageal spasms occur as a result of a motor disorder of the esophageal smooth muscle and result in multiple spontaneous contractions and swallow-induced contractions that are of simultaneous onset, large amplitude, and of repetitive occurrence. So basically all that means is that we have these contractions or peristaltic movements that are occurring, but they're not just occurring when the patient is swallowing food. They're multiple, they're spontaneous, and they have a very large amplitude, which means they're very strong and they're repetitive. And this is basically what the diffuse esophageal spasms are. Now let's talk about the hypertensive peristalsis or the nutcracker esophagus. The nutcracker esophagus occurs when esophageal contractions proceed in a coordinated manner, but the amplitude of the contractions is excessive, meaning that the contractions are too powerful. So these contractions are occurring, they're in a coordinated manner, which is good, but their amplitude, meaning their force, is too great in comparison to the normal peristalsis. And this is what we call a nutcracker esophagus or a hypertensive peristaltic esophagus. So what are the symptoms of esophageal spasms? Both pathologies present with dysphagia, regurgitation, non-cardiac chest pain, which can radiate to the back, the sides of the chest, the arms, and the sides of the jaw of the patient. And this is an important diagnostic tool to point us towards the diagnosis of these esophageal spasms. And the patient may also experience some heartburn. So how are diffuse esophageal spasms diagnosed? Diffuse esophageal spasms can be diagnosed with a barium swallow x-ray. And basically the barium swallow x-ray is taken after the patient ingests a solution containing barium sulfate and this barium sulfate coats the esophagus, making it appear radiopaque so that we can view the inner anatomy of the esophagus. And in this barium swallow, we can note the intermittent contractions of the mid and distal esophageal smooth muscle. And we can easily identify the rosary bead esophagus or the corkscrew appearance esophagus. So something to note for the diffuse esophageal spasms is the corkscrew appearance or the rosary bead appearance. So you can see this esophagus and you can see these little bumps along the way and that is known as the corkscrew or the rosary bead appearance and that can help you in the diagnosis. The diagnosis of the nutcracker esophagus. The best diagnostic method for the nutcracker esophagus is high resolution manometry. To diagnose the disease, we use the Castell criteria. The Castell criteria consists of one major criterion, which is a mean peristaltic amplitude in the distal esophagus of more than 180 millimeters mercury, and the minor criterion, which is the presence of repetitive contractions, meaning two or more, that are greater than six seconds in duration. We note the lower esophageal sphincter relaxes normally in nutcracker esophagus, but has an elevated pressure of greater than 40 millimeters mercury at baseline. So manometry basically is a test which measures the pressure within the esophagus. And of course, if those spasms are occurring, we're going to have an increase in pressure. As we mentioned earlier, that there's a lot of increase in force and increase in pressure in that esophageal body. 
So manometry is used in nutcracker esophagus to demonstrate these peaks in pressure. And the major criteria is an average amplitude in the distal esophagus of more than 180 millimeters mercury. And the minor criteria consists of the presence of repetitive contractions, which mean two or more, and they have to be greater than six seconds in length or duration. So from the picture on the left, the disorder shows peristalsis with high pressure esophageal contractions exceeding 180 millimeters mercury and contractile waves with a long duration exceeding six seconds. So this is a positive diagnosis for nutcracker esophagus. So what are the treatment options in esophageal spasms? We can start with pharmacological therapy, which includes calcium channel blockers, the botulonium toxin or Botox, nitrates, the tricyclic antidepressants and tranquilizers. We could also try esophageal dilation, which is done with a mercuryful rubber dilator. And the last procedure is the longitudinal esophageal myotomy which is usually done for pain and discomfort relief. And that brings us to the end of the presentation. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found the presentation very informative. Please do like, comment, subscribe and share. And if you would like to download a copy of this presentation, you can do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care. See you soon. Bye-bye.